بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم ما بعد The people of Iman are wise they got the basirat the firasat the vision deception never sleeps neither should discernment So like how all the elements that are out there to take this insan to jahannam The people of Iman are wise and making sure that they are making effort in a direction to procure Jannah, Jannatul Firdaus. Otherwise, outwardly, a person has the perception that he's got it under control and is getting what he wants and what he needs. But in actual fact, it's the contrary. In actual fact, it's the contrary. Husband was at his wife and she was reading a magazine and she screamed, she shrieked and she said, this is the fur coat I've been looking for my entire life and it's even on sale now. So the husband smiled and he said, darling, I'm sure you'd want one like that and she jumped for joy. He said, let me see. So he took the magazine, brought a scissor, cut out the image of the fur coat and gave it to his wife. He cut the image of the fur coat and gave it to his wife. So that's dunya and that's the deception and we need to come out of this deception. So Ulema explained to come out of deception we need to go to the correct environment. In the current environment which a person is trapped in, it may be difficult, so he needs to stay far from those things which are taking him away from Allah. Like that person that killed 100 people, he was advised, go to the town of the pious. So make hijrat away from guna towards good khair. So likewise, a person that is drowning there are three steps to be implemented. Number one, we take him out of the water. That's the first effort we need to do is secure him, get him out of the water. Then secondly, the water that's in him, take that water out. So the water that may have gone, gone into his lungs, we need to get the water out. Then when we get the water out and he's revived, we don't just let him go, but we teach him how to swim. So let me explain likewise, we are drowning in the system of the dunya. We need to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khuruj fi sabilillah, tablighh da'wa. Likewise, we need to go ta'alim wa ta'allum to the ulama, to madrasa, to the ahli ilm, and we need to learn deen. And number three, tazkiyah, spiritual reformation. Take a bad allegiance to somebody senior, somebody which we have an affiliation to, and we believe this is a person that will take us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal hikmah. This was the amal of Nubuwa. So like that person in the water, get him out of the water. Now, for example, let's say he went out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the love of dunya and the deception now becomes clear. So we clean in his heart. Then we tell him that you're going to go back to your work. You need to work to your profession. You need to love in this world. But how do you love in this world with the kafiyat of Iman? Go to the mashayikh, go to the ahli ilm. Spend time in their company, cleanse the heart and they will train you now when you go back into the world. How as a person of Iman, how should we love our life? So tarbiyah is important and we need to be making effort in that direction so that our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increased. Once Nabi salam passed by Sahaba and he said, Hal minkum yiridu Allahu anhu al-ama? Do any of you wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes his blindness? Wa basira? 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him from amongst those who have vision. So a person who is loving his life of dunya and he cannot differentiate between that which is beneficial and harmful and he is blind. Nabi alayhi salam is the greatest of asatiza, ustads, teachers and the sahaba, best of students. But he's still making the tarbiya. If we go through the qisas and incidents of sahaba, maybe there was no need for this. But yet Nabi alayhi salam understood that there's still a need for iman and reminder. Ala innahu man raghiba fi dunya. Listen well, O my sahaba, O my ummah. That person who is inclined to dunya. Wa qala amaluhu fiha. And his hopes in this dunya is very long. He's very ambitious. There's no end to his ambitions. أعم الله قلبه على قدر ذلك. Allah subhanahu wa taala will blind his heart accordingly. ومن زهد في الدنيا. Whoever abstains from dunya, they lead a aesthetic, pious life. وقصر أمله فيها. And his hopes are very minute. He doesn't have any hope from dunya. أَطَاهُ اللَّهُ عِلْمًا بِغَيْرِ تَعَلُّمٍ Allah will grant him knowledge without any learning. وَهُدًا بِغَيْرِ هِدَايَةٍ إِنَ اللَّهُ will guide him without any guidance. أَلَا إِنَّهُ سَيَكُونُ بَعْدَكُمْ قَوْمٌ After you there will be people. لَا يَسْتَقِيمُ لَهُمُ الْمُلْكِ That they will want kingdom, they will want property, but the only way they will do it is illa bil qatli, except through killing, murder, force. They'll use whatever method possible to get the dunya. Walal ghina illa bil fakhri wal bukhli. And they will strive for wealth and affluence through miserliness, arrogance. They will do what they need to do. There'll be no principle or usul. وَلَا الْمَحَبَّةِ إِلَّا بِإِتِبَاءِ الْهَوَىٰ And there will be no love, no concern for humanity, except them following their ambitions and their desires. It's only me and my family, that's it. Divorce the entire humanity, I'm not bothered of who is harmed, how they harm, and what happens to them. It becomes the alam of nafsi, nafsi. أَلَا فَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ ذَلِكَ الزَّمَانِ مِنْكُمْ If you see and witness that era فَصَبَرَ لِلْفَقْرِ وَهُوَ يَقْدِرُ عَلَى الْغِنَى You have the capability to be wealthy but you are patient means you can use alternate means to become rich use haram resources use the wrong avenues post your expose your settle for income Expose your appearance for income. Utilize all channels of haram to get an income. For sabara, you don't opt for that avenue. Was sabara, and he is patient. That people will hate him because he is obeying Allah. Means he can do wrong. That everybody will love him. Everybody will praise him. But he has the capacity. To do that, but people rebuke him now. وَالصَّبْرَ عَلَى الظُّلِّ وَهُوْ يَقْدِرُ عَلِى الْعِزِّ And he is patient, although he is regarded as insignificant, and he remains humble. Although he has all the opportunity to become famous and be honored by mankind, but he is not going to compromise on the command of Allah. لَا يُرِدُ بِذَلِكَ إِلَّا وَجَ اللَّهِ and his only intention behind it is the pleasure of Allah. أَعْطَاهُ اللَّهُ أَزَّ وَجَلَّ ثَوَابَ خَمْسِينَ صِدِّيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward of 50 صِدِّيقًا Allah will give him the reward of 50 صِدِّيقًا You have an opportunity so when a person loves dunya, Nabi is telling us he will do anything and everything 
When you love somebody, you'll do anything for them. Somebody asked the judge and uh, they were in front of the judge. The judge questioned them and interrogated them, the accused person. And he asked him, do you admit breaking into the boutique? This person was, uh, he stole from the boutique. So the judge is asking him. So he replies, yes, your honor. So the judge says, but why? What was the motive? So he replies, my wife wanted a new fashionable outfit. So then the judge goes through his notes and he finds out and he says, but the notes have been told that you done that four nights in a row. He said, yes, your honor, that is correct. My wife made me change it three times. My wife made me change it three times. So dunya outwardly is not what it seems. It seems like one thing, but it's it's contrary, it's complete opposite. Somebody was walking and uh, they had one shoe on. So a passerby seen them and said, excuse me, can I help you? I see you only had one shoe. Do you need to look for it or must I give you some money? I can help you to buy a full pay. He said, no, I was walking and I found the shoe. I found the one shoe. So outwardly is one thing, but reality is something else. Somebody was walking and they had a t-shirt on and on there was written guess, guess. So the passerby seen them and said, I know, I'm sure it's thyroid. You're trying to con me, it's not Corona, it's thyroid problem, guess. One youngster, his hair was spiked and it was dyed and he had a nose ring and he had an earring and he had a tattoo. So he told his friend, you know what, actually I don't like dressing like this. The way I look, I hate it. But it's the only way I can get my father not to take me to the masjid. It's the only way I can get my father not to take me to the masjid. So a person goes into such a deception that they'll do wrong things to stay away from good. But it should be the contrary. So Allah subhanahu wa has given us the na'mat of deen. Deen is clear cut. Dunya will never be sure about it. Dunya will never be sure about it. It is unstable. A youngster burst into the house crying. They just got back from fishing with his father. So the mother said, oh my son, what's wrong? So he with tears in his eyes, he said, we've caught the biggest fish ever dead, reeled it in. It's a giant fish. And while reeling the fish in, the fish got away. So the mother tried to console him and said, oh my son, you shouldn't be crying about that accident. Next time when you go with your father, maybe you'll catch even a bigger fish. And maybe you won't get it, you'll catch it. So just laugh it off, carry on normal. So the son said, that's the problem. That's what I just did. That's what I just did. I laughed it off. So Dunya, you don't know what's the right thing to do. The mother is advising the son, but what's the right thing to do? You got a big idea. Isa Islam used to say, وَيْلُوا لِسَاحِبِ الدُّنْيَا كَيْفَ يَمُوتُ وَيَتْرُكُهَا I am surprised at this human being, a person who has become ambitious of dunya and has forgotten akhirat, that he's going to die one day and he's going to leave all his efforts, everything that he strove for in dunya, he'll leave it behind. And he puts his trust in this dunya, he's put all his eggs in this basket of dunya, nothing for akhirat. But the guru who and this dunya is deceiving him and he's trusted it. He trusts dunya and this dunya takhbulu disgraces him. That destruction upon those people who fall to the strap of dunya, nafs and shaitan. How has this dunya given them something which they dislike? You dislike something, but you take it. 
and it has separated them from their beloveds. وَجَاءَهُمْ مَا يُعَدُونَ And eventually it will show them what Allah and His Rasul promised them. What your Nabi had promised you, you will see it. Yet this dunya is so deceiving. وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ الدُّنْيَا هَمُّهُ Destruction upon the person whose concern and focus is only dunya. وَالْخَطَايَا عَمَلُهُ And his pastime and his ambition is just committing guna and sin and disobeying Allah. كَيْفَ يَفْتَدِحُ غَدًا بِذَنْبِهِ Tomorrow he will stand before Allah in front of mankind, in front of the whole of humanity, disgraced and embarrassed. So he said this dunya is such that you trust it but it's going to deceive you. You trust it, it's going to deceive you. They say there was a millionaire driving in his limo and he's seen a humble needy person on the sidewalk, on the roadside eating grass. So he ordered his driver, stop, stop, he wound down the window. And he inquired from the person, that shame, uh, you are eating grass, what's the reason? So the person said, I don't have any money for any real food, I have to survive on leaves and grass. So the millionaire said, you can come with me. The person said, I have a wife, two sisters, six children. He said, no problem, we've got enough space, bring them along. So this person here was more shocked and surprised. He said, there's not many good, out, good people out there in the world. And I bet you're not going to surprise us with just lunch. But I got a feeling you're going to take us somewhere and say, this is your house. So the millennial said, no, 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 no. You got it wrong. You don't understand. The grass at my home is four feet high. The grass at home is four feet high. And no lawnmower will cut that length of grass. That's why I need you. So dunya, we trust it, but it's full deception, only deception. A person doesn't even know how much deception they're in. There was a football fan at a stadium of a long-awaited match. The view was bad, so he took his binoculars looking for his seat. He found an empty seat. Eventually he made his way there and he found the seat and the person who was next to it. He said, excuse me sir, is the seat taken? So he said, yes, it's my wife's seat, but she has passed on. She has passed on. And she was a fan of the team that is playing today. So the person apologized. He came there looking for a better view, for a better seat. He said, I'm sorry to hear of your loss. If you don't mind me asking, why didn't you just give the ticket to a friend or relative? So at least you didn't come alone. You should have given it to a friend or a relative. He said, no one was available. They all went to her funeral. They all went to my wife's funeral. And he's watching the football. So that's one of the ways Batil traps the people of Iman through sport. It's a way of keeping people busy. Imagine 22 grown-up adult males running after a piece of pig skin for 90 minutes with 100,000 spectators and another 3.5 billion spec uh, spectators, almost half of the Earth's population, their happiness, their sadness, their highs, their lows, their animosity, their emotions is based on the movement of the pig skin in a certain direction. If they won or they lost, how did they change your life? They won the championship, so what? If they lost, so what? How does that affect the people of Iman? What a deception. Likewise, gaming. Win, lose. The people of Iman, we are supposed to be the Imams of mankind to show the people of the world, dunya and akhirat, ukhrijat linnas. We've been taken out for the benefit and the guidance of the whole of mankind, not only the people of Iman, even the Kuffar, we've been sent for them. We're supposed to be the Imams, yet we've become the followers. The amal for today is when the Imam says, Ghayr al-Maghdubi alim wal dalin faqulu amin, we say amin silently. If it conforms to that, khufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambihi, sins will be forgiven. 
and فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ وَافَقَ كَلَامُ كَلَامَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ غُفِرَ لِمَنْ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ Another riwayat. Everybody in the masjid will be forgiven. Another riwayat. Allah has given me three qualities. One of them is وَأَطَانِ التَّأْمِينِ مَا هَسَدْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَا شَيْءٍ And the Jews have not been avarous and jealous of you more than this Ameen that Allah has given you. وَأَخِرُ تَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ